Hey guys, how are we keeping dirty off road? If you guys saw our last video, you put 37s on the truck. Yes, I know, I know, it's a controversial thing. If you've seen my previous videos, you know my feelings on it. 37s on a Raptor without any major upgrades is a bad idea. It is a nightmare, right? It's a nightmare to go to 37s because of the rubbing and everything that's going on. Now, we've been talking to quite a bit of people about how they run 37s, and I did find one person that does run 37s on the regular and off-roads with stock fenders. Yeah, it sounds surprising, right? So that guy is Jeremiah from EXO, and he runs 37s on his truck with the stock fenders. I mean, he does get some rubbing. You can't avoid rubbing. He's able to do it. So in this video, we're gonna go over the trimming you have to do, then the other considerations you have to do because there's other upgrades that have to happen down the road because you're running 37s. So let's go through that now. First consideration when it comes to going to 37s is wheels. You can run stock wheels and run 37s, but eventually 37s are gonna require suspension upgrades of some sort. You're gonna wanna upgrade the upper control arms, shock, and eventually go with like a bolt kit or a weld on kit somewhere down the line. Stock wheels will not work with any bolt kit or any upper control arm upgrades you do on the market. They just don't. The offset is 34. 34 means that the wheel is the tire is gonna be farther tucked into the wheel well. So you need something that's gonna bring the wheel out so that you can upgrade the upper control arms so that you can put a bolt kit or something like that. So first step, wheels. You gotta do wheels. Now the ones we're using here are zero offset wheels, meaning that it brings the wheel out 34 millimeters from stock, right? Brings it down to zero, down to the middle of the rim. Really with stock fender, zero offset is gonna cause some problems. And I'm gonna show you why. So a zero offset wheel is gonna bring the tire farther out. So that, when this thing tucks in, is gonna interfere with the stock fenders. Now, if you're gonna upgrade the fenders, which you probably should consider, that should be one of the options you consider with 37s, that should be okay if you do like a plus two kit. Depending on what bulk kit you do, some bulk kits will work with plus two, some bulk kits will require plus four. It just depends on how crazy you're gonna get. And what that does is it moves the outside of the fender out two inches, and then most of them, whatever you do uh, out, they do up. So they'll do two inches out, two inches up to uh, give you more clearance for this tire. Wheels are gonna be a, a hard choice because you're gonna find that your manufacturers don't all provide the best options. For example, four wheel parts has zero offset. Methods has zero offsets, but they don't give you positive offsets. A better choice would be like a plus six, like you can get from Icon wheels that tucks it in just a little bit, enough to clear, say, a stock fender, or like a plus 18 that kind of splits the difference between your stock wheels that are 34. Now, whatever you decide to do, make sure you consider your future upgrades in that decision. Because if you're gonna go to a bulk kit, zero offset is what you need. If you're just gonna stay mild and do, say, upper control arms, switch out the suspension, you know, that kind of stuff, you can get away with the plus six, move that out a little bit, and still have the ability to clear uh, an upper control arm. Now, something else to consider that's gonna impact how you trim is the tire. This right here is a BFG KM3 tire. BFG KM3s are actually a little bit smaller than your typical 37s. So depending on what you run, say if you run a Nitto or a Toyo, those are gonna be a little bit larger than the BFGs because BFGs run small. Or if you decide to go wider, um, I do have a set of 13 and a half 37s, Nitto Terra Grappler G2s that barely fit on this truck with the stock setup. I mean, there's no space for the upper control arm. So yeah, take a look at your tires. Consider how big they are. BFGs are gonna be a little bit smaller. Other tires might be, you know, true 37. Those are definitely gonna see some more rowing. All right, so while my boys are getting the other side ready, I wanted to talk about the benefits and drawbacks of 37s. So there's a couple of benefits. The first one, the one that everybody goes to 37s for, is the look. They look really good. Hi, Ethan. Hi. 37s look really good. Honestly, the Raptor, I think, would look better overall if it had 37s and if the fenders could fit it. The number two reason, 37s means more meat. So more meat means you can run much smoother off-road because the truck can take bigger holes. Bumps and holes are going to feel different on a 37-inch tire because the tire is bigger, so it can deal with those holes much better. So when you're going down the trail, you know, say a little washboard that might have felt really bad on a 35, you may not even feel it at all on a 37. It really depends on the size of the hole, but overall, a bigger tire means you can roll over holes and you're not gonna feel as much on the trail. Third reason is height. 37s, obviously if you go from 35s to 37s, that increases the height of the truck too, so it's gonna raise it up a little bit too, so that's another benefit. You know, combined with everything else, you don't wanna do any kind of lift kit on the Raptor. Remember that, lift kits are useless on a Raptor, they'll break on the first jump. So another way to add height to the truck is the tires. 37 inch tires is gonna add height. Now with that, there are a lot of drawbacks 
two running 37s. So you guys saw there's a lot of rubbing. If you try to do it with stock fenders, eventually you are gonna rip off a fender. We're gonna be testing this setup over the next couple of months, but I'm gonna show you, even with all this trimming, there's still gonna be a lot of rubbing in that, in that wheel well, so we may have to adjust. And a lot of the other guys that we've been talking to that have been doing similar setups, they've all had problems with rubbing. Shit, even the guys that do plus two fenders rub on the inside. You just can't avoid it. These trucks weren't designed to deal with 37s. And even with aftermarket fenders, rubbing is the norm. You just gotta deal with it. Another drawback to running 37s is power. The 37s do rob the truck of quite a bit of power. And eventually you are gonna need some kind of tune to compensate. Typically, uh, most of the guys that go 37s will do a tune to add at least another 50 horsepower on there, just so they can get back to stock performance. Another bad, it's gonna reduce your fuel economy substantially. We were lucky if we got 15 on this truck with the way we were set up with the lifts, you know, the spring lifts up front and everything. This is obviously going to lower it even further. And the fact that we went with KM3s, which is an MT tire, that's going to be even more lower fuel economy. So fuel economy is going to go down. Lastly, and the biggest reason why you may want to not do 37s is the extra stress that it puts on your suspension. This suspension was not designed to handle 37. So it's gonna put extra stress on all the joints, all the ball joints, all the arms, the steering. The steering is gonna be the most sensitive to 37s. It's a bigger tire, it's more weight, it's a whole lot more force being brought into the truck. So in a high speed stuff, a whole lot more umph, yes. So over time, it is gonna lessen the life of some of those components in the suspension, the ball joints and all that stuff. So that means more maintenance. 37s mean way more maintenance. Consider all of that, right? There's a lot of benefits to it. Most of them is looks, but there's a lot of drawbacks too. And you got to be ready to deal with those drawbacks. Rubbing, maintenance, reduced power, truck is going to run sluggish, all that stuff. Okay, now we're going to be starting off on the passenger side for our trimming because it's the easier side. There's less things to do here. We don't have to worry about wire harnesses over here. We're going to take the trim piece off. We're going to take the liner off. And we're going to start trimming some of that area so that we can get the space we need. And we are going to take care of the pinch welds. That's going to be the biggest fucking problem today. It's going to take a shit ton of time. We're going to have to beat on this thing. We may even have to go get a different mallet because all we got is a mallet. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be moving this. We're going to take care of the pinch welds. And then finally, we're going to push this whole area in. We're going to bend it and push it in. We've got a lot of work to do. Time to get to it. We need to remove the trim. We're gonna take all these bolts off right here in order to do that. And then you gotta take all these push fittings off. There's one, two, three, four. They have to come off in order for this to come down. And then this, we're gonna have to pop off. We're gonna have to disconnect the light. And that'll get us access to see what we have to trim. Now, we already know this right here has to be trimmed. So we're gonna do a cut from here down, but there's a lot of structure behind it. And that's the concern right here. There's a lot of structure, including the pinch weld, that has to be cut. So that's the next step. Next, we need to start popping this off, and this is where it gets kind of tricky. Basically, got to pop it off with those little parts without damaging the paint, which is easier said than done. I hate this. And there she is. Trim is out. Now before we can take the fender liner off, those bolts, all those bolts gotta come off. So you got these little tabs right here. It's a little tab right here you gotta clear. You gotta clear that before it pops off. And she's out. Now we can really start taking a look at what's up here. Quite a bit of stuff. Back of the lights. Got our washer fluid. And 
something interesting. All right, so this is new to me. My last truck had this big old block of plastic right here that we had to pop off in order to get it on. So depending on the year you have, the 17s and 18s have a big old block of plastic, and it may just be the 17s that you're gonna have to pop off. Best way to do it is just get a pry bar in there, pop it off, and it should come off. Looks like it was replaced by this thing. So this is the pinch well that everybody talks about that has to be bent. And if you look at it, it makes the tire get awfully close to some wire harnesses and stuff. Now, good thing is, is these are all secure, so we don't have to worry about that. But we do have to worry about the pinch welds. Now, depending on who you talk to, there's two school of thought. One school of thought is you just really need to trim it from here, do a couple of trims, and bend it back. Other school of thought is you have to trim all the way up to the top over here, and that should give you what you need. I'm a little hesitant about doing all of it up to the top, but um, we'll have to see. And then if I remember right, some of this has got to go away too. Very different design from the previous setup. All right, let's get to it. So when we cut this, we're gonna basically cut this off right here, this little flap. And then we're also going to cut in that direction too. Basically, we're going to cut up to this right here, the cap. So, best way to do it is to kind of mark off your line. Follow the line of the fender. Use a Sharpie. So first, we're going to cut this off right here. Cut this little piece, and then we're going to cut that one. That's basically the line that we're going to cut to. See how the cut went? It's not the cleanest cut. The hardest part is when you get to this and you start getting into metal. So I think right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this off, take this bolt off, and uh, finish the cut. It's a 10 millimeter socket right here. We need to finish cutting this, and I think we got to do it at an angle right here in order to clear that correctly. So that's what we got to do next. Okay, now from here, we're gonna have to cut every like inch and a half to an inch all the way up to about here and start bending this pinch weld tip. This is by far the hardest part to do because you feel like you're destroying your baby. <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and uh, start cutting all those things. And uh, unfortunately, I don't think our cutting wheel is gonna be uh, long enough for this, but we're gonna make it, we're gonna make it work. You guys can kind of see our cuts and we stop right about there and a good rule of thumb is do it in between the rivets so that the the spot welds the pinch welds so that the pinch welds still stay intact and you're not actually cutting those and we may have to do a little bit of extra cuts but like i said about an inch and a half each and now we got to beat on it and beat on it hard a bit of beating. let's try the small hammer first guys 
Que el suck. No, this way. That way? Yep. It's not moving, huh? No! We're gonna need a bigger hammer. Fuck, this is hard. That's what she said. You got it. Fuck me, this is gonna be impossible. Shit on me! I don't think we should use this. Dad, how are we gonna get this out? I don't think we should use it. Let me try it. Now we're gonna try this bad boy. Fuck! All I can do is hit the fucking truck. You sure they bent it that way? Okay. Dad, check your video. Yeah, check your video. See if they bent it the other way. Oh, shit. I can't get enough levers because this thing's too much. Whatever. Let me see the other one. Let's see the axe. We're gonna have to get a, a different one. You know what? Hit it. Is it moving? Oh. Careful! Yeah. yeah, it's not moving. So, what, you get a new hammer? So at this point we realized we don't have the right hammers to do this so we went out to try to find some some sledgehammers so we can do this now you'd be, be surprised how hard it is to find a sledgehammer during covid we were able to find a five pound one no problem but finding a 12 or 15 pound one was almost next to impossible we left ethan here to kind of bang away see if he can get make any progress he didn't we got the right hammer and finally we were able to make some progress Some fucking movement. Can I get your shot? Ah, that hurts the wrist. Fuck! I presume I have some serious strength for this. So no matter what we tried, we just didn't have the strength. We couldn't get the leverage for whatever. I mean, big respect goes out to the guys down from RPG. I have no idea how these guys can swing the mallet the way they were and got those pinch wilds done in 30 minutes. It took us hours to get those damn things done. So mad respect for those guys to doing it right and doing it quick. That's it, right there. We're good, bud. We're good. Oh, that sucked. Now, if you have a regular shop do this, like RPG and SVC, they could do it in no time. They could probably get this done in like 30 minutes. Easily. But our weak asses spent a couple hours trying to find the right hammers, hammers to get this done. And really, Ethan was the one that had the strength to do it. I didn't. But my hands are messed up. Fucking hurt. The 12s are done, I think. I mean, it's not the prettiest job, but it'll do. Especially down here. We did a pretty shit job down here. Well, uh, we started kicking our overdrive up here. Now we're going to put the liner back in, measure out where we need to cut, and then cut the liner. So that's next. <sighs> Why are you guessing like that, right? Yeah. Okay. Alright. So, we gotta put that tab in. Alright. Okay, let me get this tab in over here first. There it is. Okay, give me the screw on. The screw on tab, this one. Take the screw top off. Take the screw top off. Alright. Just screw it off. Yeah, screw it. Screw it. Oh, screw it. You know what screwing is, right? I hope. <laughs> I 
would hope so. <laughs> Your hands are pretty screwed up, Ethan. <laughs> yeah, do you see how bad I banged it? Yeah. You? Okay. That would have gotten in. Alright, let me get another one. Okay. So now we taking a break after this? Yeah. Last one's right where no. right here. Yeah, hold on though. Hold on no. on that one. No. Okay. We need to cut this off right here. So we're gonna cut this off all the way to here. And then we're gonna need to do some sheet metal screws. So give me the steps. Let's see where we're at. Let's make sure this tab in. And then See the old hole? The old hole doesn't work anymore right here, so we're gonna have to sheet metal screw. Let's get these little ones in over here so it gives us an extra little bit of space. All right. All right, now this last one, you can't actually reuse the hole that used to be in here because it's not gonna hold it correct. You gotta push it all the way back and get yourself a sheet metal screw to hold it in. Move your hand. Alright, go get me a big washer, because this thing's not going to hold. Okay. This has to be awful. Awesome. Unfortunately, we put this on before at least putting a little bit of paint on the uh, pinch holes that we just fucked up. It's a good idea to go back and put a little bit of paint down there. It, it is aluminum, but it doesn't hurt to add some rust protection and just some protection in general. So we're going to put some cheap paint and then put everything back on. We're exhausted. We're not even done with the first one. We're exhausted. Any paint will do, really. It's all about just protecting it, that's all. Doesn't have to be perfect. It's not a bad idea to get some new ones of these. Now we still need to cut that corner. The okay. extent of that, we're gonna find out in a second. I'm not pushing it in just yet. I'm just getting it close. So see how you end up with extra room down here? So what we gotta do is we gotta cut some of this off and bend it. So we can either cut this off completely and not hold it, or we can cut it right here and bend it and then cut the rest. What do you think? Honestly, whatever gets me in the pool faster. This line's actually gonna be cut all the way to there. And we're gonna use this. We're gonna have it tuck in underneath and then I'm gonna use probably some sheet metal screws or something to hold this flap in. I think that's what we're gonna try to do because I've seen a lot of people just cut this and then you lose a lot of the strength on this piece. So I wanna add a little bit of extra strength back here. Uh, Who knows, it may work, it may be stupid, I don't know. I'm gonna try it though. Now because most of my measurements are on the inside, I'm gonna drill a little pilot hole to kind of tell me where that line is so I can draw it out on the other side. I want to make sure I get this angle right, so hopefully that's right. Now, if you're doing this, you may also want to consider trimming here and doing a line all the way here. We're going to try to do it without and see if we get rubbing. If we do get rubbing, then we'll come back in and adjust our line. So that's our line right there. That should at least give us some movement. And we can figure it out once it's on there. Let's go ahead and get it on. You got it in? It might go into that little hole again. If it does, it's perfect. I try to get that hole to line up with that piece right there. That hole with that. That's what we're trying for. <laughs> there we go. I'm gonna push this in and we're gonna put a screw through the bottom of it. Oh, your sheet metal screw like this one, this giant one. I'll try to hold that bottom in. All 
not even. One more thing, and this is done. What, the tire? This, and it's done. All right, let's go ahead and clean this up. So this is why we left this flap on here, because basically what I'm going to do is we're going to put these together like that. I do it. And drill it. Yeah. It's the goal. It's going to fucking suck, but we're going to try it. I'm using a clamp just to get it held in place. You guys can see how it's overlapping. There is a gap here, so that's why we're using a, a longer sheet metal screw. Now, hopefully this holds. If not, then we'll get a bolt set up. We'll take this off and get a bolt and nut set up and have it hold in place. So let's give it a try. Give me the screw. You hear that, guys? Dad's getting a nut set up. I don't want that it's holds. Not moving. That holds. <laughs> that holds. And I think that came out pretty good. Yeah, it holds. It's got the angle. It's out of the way. It's pretty good. Oh, I slipped. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's gonna hold good. So, yes, this is not pretty. This is downright ugly the way we did this shit. You know what? But yeah. It's our first time doing it. But this side's done! Alright, I'm gonna Next stop recording. Hold, hold we are. Oh, yeah. Video. Yeah, come on, Dad. You got this. <laughs> I just got a clip of you trying to get up. One side's done, and we're gonna show you guys the difference between the side we just trimmed and the side that's not trimmed, and show you the difference in rubbing. Right now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have Ethan go to the opposite side, the side we just fixed. We're gonna make a right turn, which is when that tire has the most contact, and show you guys how this, how there is no contact anymore. Right here is the untrimmed side. Got it. A difference. Such a difference. Yeah, because you're hitting right now. On the other side, you weren't. Now for the other side. We're exhausted. That took us a couple hours to get that side done because we've never done it. Now to do the other side. Let's go park it. Now note, the driver's side is going to be different. See all those tabs? There's a lot of tabs on here because there's a lot of cables right about this. So in order to do this right, we're going to have to secure all those cables to the body so that if we ever rip a fender off, which is a possibility with 37s even with trimming, we don't lose all those cables because if we lose all those cables because they were stuck to the inner fender liner, we're screwed. Truck's disabled. And shit, even totaled if all those cables get destroyed. So, pay extra close attention when you take the liner off. All those cables need to be freed, and all those cables need to be secured. But look at that. Look at all those cables. All those cables, different sensors, like you got this right here is your live valve sensors. All of this stuff has to be secured. Is that the only sensor you know? Mm-hmm. Because that's <laughs> the only one you pointed out. Yeah, because we've had to touch that one before. <laughs> That's what she said. Touch it real good. Touch it. Oh, or we're gonna leave. One more. We're gonna do it. Oh, no, never mind. I lied. Ah, I get psyched. Gets. What? One more. Oh, no, mas. Oh, I dropped this. Oh, no, mas. Come on. You can do it. What's taking so long? Believe in yourself. Come on, man. Take it out. I don't want it.
Alright. I think that's gonna be okay. What do we think, guys? It looks like shit, but... Oh. Whatever gets me inside the fastest! Shit. I have more strikes than you got. What? This is your side of the, the whatever, sledgehammer. This is mine. Okay. Force, not weight. Phil, so you're one sandwich from being fat. So on this side, we did the cutting a little bit different. Um, I think this angle is about the same. It's a little off. Yeah, it's a little but, straighter than what we were waiting had. You know, I think on the other side, we came a little bit more this way, but you know, that should be okay. Um, we did do a little beveled cut here as opposed to straight cut. Hopefully that'll bend better. We did a little bit more cutting here so that I'm hoping that it gives way. That piece is still big because it has two rivets on it. And then again, we stop before this guy because we're going to try to match his angle. Be real careful with your cables. We have our secured. Notice how I didn't secure them to our master cylinder because we get that shit pretty fucking hot. They're all secured to other cables or to the body to uh, keep them out of the way as much as possible. All right. Now comes the fun part. Ethan's going to take your first stab. We didn't get so good at bending at this time. The part that really matters is that at the bottom. This stuff at the bottom, you want to try to get flat. Here over here, that metal's thick and we couldn't get enough leverage and we did not have, we did not have the right sledgehammer, but. It was three wide. We did get it somewhat out of the way. So now we're gonna give it a coat of paint and start putting it back together. Quick recap, make sure you secure your cables. Try not to secure them to the actual ABS. Do them separately to each other. Bent the pinch rods as much as we could. Cut the fender. Now we're gonna start putting it all back together, drill when we need to, and get her done. Okay, we got the liner back in. Do not put the cables back in these holes. Again, if you ever get into a situation where this might get ripped off, that's a liability we don't want. Right now we're gonna figure out how much of this we gotta cut, and drill a new hole for that, and then get our liner back in on this side as well. Nicely. Now we just gotta secure it right Okay, you got it, Ethan? Go.
Let's go lead our hole. And then, and we need to go from our hole to this. Basically, this peak. Right here. Ready? Mm hmm. Let's go. This is what we're going for right here. That tuck. We need it to tuck like that. And then we're gonna jump down like there. Yep. And then might as well cut that off because that's useless. That's just gonna get in the way. Yep. Okay. Go. All right, I'm lined up. Start in your unit. Be real careful if you're using a drill. Drill. Now we gotta just do the bottom and we're done. There we go. This is the overlap we're going with. This is something extra that we're doing to try to kind of keep this angle right here and have it holding. What is this? Ah, don't do that. I'm glad the fucking camera can't see that shit. I have 0. 0.5 again. There she is. And we're done. Yay. Now we gotta put the tire back oh, on. Stuck. Oh, I'm sorry. Are you stuck? Are you stuck? Oh, I'm so sorry. Are you stuck? Are you stuck? Ah, you're a prisoner of mine now. Oh, shit. You're an asshole. Are you still stuck? I'm just going to take a nap here. Okay. Dad, you do know we can't put the tire on unless you're out of the way. Yeah, we can do it. All right, guys. There you go. We got both sides done. We are exhausted. We're going to go hit the pool because it's, it's hot. It's over 100 degrees. It's hot. Hand destroyed in the process. Yeah, we're we're a little shot, man. Beating those freaking pitch falls is no joke. It's a lot of work. And I'm sure it didn't help we didn't have the right tools. We couldn't find a large, you know, 15, 20 pound sledgehammer. So we had to do it with a small five pounder, which was not easy. This right here is just the start, what we think we're gonna need. I We're definitely not done. Next step is to go test it out, see how it does off-road. We have a feeling we're still gonna get rubbing, and like I said at the beginning of the video, rubbing's gonna be the one constant with 37s, especially if you're running stock fenders. We're hoping that what we did is enough, but we're gonna find out. Later on down the road, we're gonna look at suspension upgrades to help us deal with the 37s a little bit better. And we may even be looking at a tune as well that'll allow us to get that extra power back because she is going to be sluggish so be on the lookout for the next video we're going to take the truck out see how she does on a slow trail and then from there we're going to spend some time in the desert and really test those 30 zemas out see how she does one disclaimer I, we did a pretty shitty job when it came to our pinch welds you want to try to get those as flat as you can it's not easy it really comes down to skill and all that stuff to bend those so if you guys want have a local shop do it for you i know rpg sec all those guys do this kind of service they can get that taken care of for you and you don't have to worry about beating on your own truck but this right here with our setup i'm still expecting some rubbing especially if you look at you know the way the tires are yeah, sticking out still because like, right? there's zero offset right so i'm still going to expect some rubbing but with future suspension setups that I want to do, I need at least a plus six wheel in order to be able to fit those 37s. So we went with zero offset because that's what four wheel parts gave us. We're really happy with the way the truck looks with the 37s and the four wheel part rims. I'm still thinking that this, this right here needs some color. I may paint that like a gunmetal gray or something because I kind of like the idea of offsetting the color a little bit. All right guys, so again, this is just the start of our journey. Be on the lookout for the next video when we start giving you guys some examples of how this rolls on the trails. If you guys remember all the trails we hit for the Geyser's Eye Box video, we're gonna hit the same exact trails with this setup and see how it handles. Which I'm a little concerned about because you know we got the eye box, the eye box tend to let it go in a little I hope we don't rip the fenders off. <laughs> Alright guys, put any questions or comments below. I know you're gonna have a bunch of them. Let us know what we did wrong, because I'm sure there's a couple things we did do wrong. I guarantee we did do wrong. We're not experts when it comes to this stuff right here. We're going into new territory. We've got a lot of advice on what to do. We applied as much of it as we could. Hopefully it works out and we'll let you guys know if it does work out. Eventually though, like I said, we are gonna plan some suspension upgrades because 
the stock suspension can't really handle those 37s, so we got to do some upgrades to let it, so that the truck can handle and be more reliable off-road. With that, guys, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next one. What's that? Nothing. Is that all the stuff we cut off the truck today? No! It is. It's not! Did you just shit that out? <laughs> Where'd you go?